Well, today, today is a good day. It is a good day. Uh, what I heard about Cody a lot in the last week was uh, that he was a hero. And he, and he was. He was a hero to a lot of people. But one of the things that stuck with me was something his father-in-law, Jeff Lilly, said to me. He said, you know, this was Cody's story, but now this is our story. It's not just us as a family, but it's, it's all of us. And the, the thing that my wife and I just, what Cody would want us to tell you is, is thank you. Thank you to the people of Littleton. Thank you to the people of Colorado, to the firefighters, to James and Bill and Jason and Justin and oh, Brandon. To, I remember as I met him in the hospital, the thing I would say is thank you for loving my boy. And, and their response was, hey, it was easy. I mean, he was easy to love. And that was the thing about Cody. The, but, but the support that we've had and that we've seen from the family that's here, it, it, it's, it's not just a family, it's a community. From Russell, from Paul Russell, from the others, the ones that came alongside us and supported us, from his friends, from Jason, from the ones who loved him, from Josh, the ones who... I still see my boy in their face. <laughs> and it's hard. And it's going to stay hard for a while. But I, I will be a different person, not just because of who Cody was, but I will truly be a different person because of who you are, the men and women of the South Metro Fire Department. I, I, I will never be the same person. I will show up differently for my friends and my family. I will show up differently for my community. And that's the difference Cody would have wanted in us. He would have wanted us to show up because he showed up for people. That's what he did. That's who Cody was. He was, he was the one I played with. He was the one I had fun with. I. I I was planning on coming out for the hockey tournament in a couple a couple months, and I had told Cody, if you coach, I'll still play. Well, I'm, I'm, and then I told Justin, if you play, I'll still play, because I'm, I'm coming out, because I'm not letting go of you people, because you're my family now. You've, you've changed me, because Cody changed you. And I just want to thank you from his mother and I, from his wife and I, from his mother-in-law, his father-in-law, and his lovely kids, and from my family, and his brothers and sisters, and uh, it, I usually would have taken this and, and hidden away in a corner and grieved on my own. I, I wouldn't have brought it out, but the strength of the men, and the emotion of the men, and the love of the men here in Littleton, Colorado, uh, will never be forgotten. And my friends and family who came out to support him today, friends who haven't seen him in many years, and it made us realize the people Cody had touched. I got calls from hockey coaches he had when he was seven years old. I got emails from people he hasn't seen in years, people from Hume Lake, people that made a, made a difference that they knew Cody. They made a difference in his life and he made a difference in their life. And, but the one thing, that I will never forget, and I, it, I will forever be changed, is, is by the people of this town and this state, the state that he loved. And just, we were honored to meet you, to know you, to love you, and to, and to be loved by you. And Cody was right. Love you, miss you, kiss you, and I give that to all of you. And just thank you again. How's Brother Chris would like to come share? Hard growing up after that video. I'm breathing straight. So, Cody was my little brother, but he and I both knew that in that relationship, he showed up as the big brother. He 
taught me so much about growing up, about becoming a man, about integrity to your values, about what it can look like when two people share values and a vision and create life together, create, just create together. He taught me about loving through differences. He loved, he loved you no matter how different you were from him. And I couldn't think of very many people more different in very core ways than he and I. And I thought at times that our differences were too much for the relationship to bear. And every time I would start to give up, he'd reach out and, and find me. I would be down and out, homeless, broken, confused, and he'd take me into his home, give me anything that he had, share his family with me, share his space with me. And he, what, he would hold the prayer and the vision that I would come out on top. And no matter where I was, he would just encourage me to like keep on going just a little bit more, just try to just, just keep breathing, just go a little bit more. And as so many of you have come up to me and shared with me your experience of how Cody showed up in your life, I realized he wasn't just doing that for me. I thought, I thought it was just me, I thought it was special. <laughs> but I realized what Cody saw in special in me was that I existed and that made me special. And, and he wasn't just a big brother for me, he was a big brother for so many people in so many ways. If, if, you, if you needed anything, he gave it to you. If you mentioned that you liked the outdoors, next week you were on a hike with him out hunting. If you mentioned that you were at the end of your rope, he would be there just telling you just hold on just a little bit longer, just a little bit longer, have faith. It's all, it's all perfect. It's not our plan, it's God's plan, it's all perfect. And one of my favorite things about Cody was how little he knew how cool he was. Like he was, he was a sage, he was a humble sage. He didn't know he was a sage. And coming out to visit him this last time, he shared with me a saying that really showed me a lot of how he lived his life. He, it was a philosophy that he had of giving, of giving his all in every moment. And he said, me and my friends have this thing and it's, we just tell each other just five more, just five more. And that five more, when it's for something that's good and he really wanted to do, it'd be like, his wife's telling him to come in for dinner and be like, just, I just want to shoot five more arrows, just five more. And that means 25 more. And time to go to work and he's playing with his kids and just five more minutes. And where it really, really stuck with me is that um, it, in the challenging times, it was just five more also. So you'd be on a hike and there's a 20 mile hike he's got to get to, it's getting dark. And instead of looking at, rather than looking at like the insurmountable mountain in front of him, he just looks at the steps that are right in front of him right there and just, just five more, just five more miles. It's 25 miles and he's just, yeah, just five more miles, guys, just five more. And that, that philosophy, it, it really struck me really deeply as, as a way to, to live. To, to live in every moment just giving just just a little bit more. When you think you need to give up, Cody, Cody's example that he gave us is give just a little bit more in every moment, just a little bit more. And I could see that in his life. And every in, in, in this battle with his tumor, he never gave up. He saw that the plan was perfect. I just need to have faith and keep giving just a little bit more. Don't look at the big scary picture. Just look at what's right in front of me a little bit more. And I can look back on Cody's life and see that that, that little bit more, those five steps more in every moment add up to a lifetime of him giving his all. It seems like just a little bit in the moment. It seems like a five little step, but it's, it's a philosophy of giving. He'd give you five more minutes, and that means he would be there with you for the next two hours talking if you needed someone to hold you. And this is an insane tragedy that this happened 
I lost a brother, we all lost a brother, we all lost a Cody in this. And it could be really easy to focus on that tragedy. And it's good to feel it and feel it all the way through and just, It sucks, it hurts. But moving forward, I choose to focus on the gift that, that he's leaving us, the gift of being able to witness a life of someone who just gives a little bit more constantly and, and focus on the seed of that, that beautiful thing that now gets to live within me. And I know that if he was here with me, I, I don't know, I think that if he was here with me, see me in these days where it's just like those moments where I don't want to live in a world without him. And he'd come up next to me and just be like, you got it, man, just five more breaths. Just, just get to the next five breaths and have faith. Have faith that this isn't your plan. This is God's plan. And, and the gift that he gives us is seeing what happens when someone who lives that philosophy of just giving a little bit more, when that someone leaves this plane, it shakes the ground. That kind of love shakes the earth. And that's the seed that he was planting in us. He was teaching us about that kind of love. We have the opportunity to shake the earth when we leave, if we just give in every moment. And so that's, that's his message that came to my heart that I wanted to give to you guys. And I love you, brother, so much. <laughs> You're so cool. Thank you. And last, we have Cameron Mooney. I'm going to start by reading a passage from the book of James, chapter 4, verse 13 through 17. It says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such, and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. I'm going to tell you guys a little story about when Cody and I were kids. I was probably around 10 or 11. Cody's a few years older than me. And we're playing with fire in the backyard. Because that's what boys do. And... Uh, we had this ball pit, like a ball pit like you'd see in Chuck E. Cheese or McDonald's. Why we had a ball pit, no one knows, but why we had two trampolines, a half pipe, and a stranger sleeping on our couch. No one knew that either, so it, it just seemed par for the course. But Cody uh, took one of these plastic balls from the ball pit, and he lit it on fire, and then looked at it, and he threw it at me suddenly. And it hit me in the neck, and then it hit me in the arm, and <laughs> gave me a huge blister in both places. And Cody being the big brother that he was. Oh, no, no, oh, my God, I'm so, so, don't tell mom. <laughs> Just don't tell mom. And I'm, like, trying not to cry, and I'm, like, okay. And I'm, like, thinking, like, what am I going to tell mom? I, told, I remember telling my mom that I fell on a rock <laughs> when she asked about my blister. And she had four other kids and then had to deal with a stranger sleeping inside. So she, well, I guess, just got by her pretty quickly like most things did. <laughs> I've watched Cody. As a boy, I watched him as a lovesick teenager as he dated Emily his freshman year of high school, and then they broke up, and then they dated, and they broke up and dated. I don't know how many times. But then they eventually got engaged and married and had a bunch of kids, and it was amazing. And I also got to watch Cody as a man, and that's, that's um, what I want to celebrate today a little bit more. Cody is a man who is an incredibly hard worker with such vast integrity as a husband that I envied so much in the way that he was able to love you, Emily, and give so much to you and put you first. Cody is a father 
who seemed to have more patience for his four children than I did for one and a half. And lastly, Cody is a friend. You see, as friends, if you want to stay close, you can't just rely on the things that you used to be connected by. If you want to stay close, you have to maintain what, how are we connecting today? What do we still have in common? What are our, what are our values? What are we still doing As over the last five years, my siblings and I have been able to become deep friends. I'm so grateful that we had that time to build that relationship. And Cody, as a friend, was such a special relationship to me, to my wife, and I know to my other siblings as well. And Cody, as a friend, was someone that, I'll say this, when Cody was young, he had a learning disability. When Cody um, was a young adult and even older, um, he struggled with self-confidence at times, thinking he wasn't as cool as everyone here knows he is, wasn't um, as smart, wasn't as much of a leader. And I remember thinking as I would talk to him over the years, and whether I was hearing a story of him struggling at the station through something or through a relationship or something and, and wanting so badly for the people close to Cody that were here to see him the way I saw him. To see him the way Emily saw him and our family saw him as this sweet, sweet man who just loved you endlessly, that was funny and, a, and smart and a good leader and all these things. I remember just thinking, I just hope people see him that way. I just want wants that for him, and not knowing if that existed here. But I can say today how thankful I am over the last two weeks of being here in this incredibly tragic time, as my family has already spoken about extensively, we've been showered by the love of his family out here, the love of his friends, of his firefighter family. Um, We were not allowed to mourn on our own, and that was a good thing, because we needed you to surround us and lift us and hold us as we went through that, and we will continue to do so. But even more special was as you were there and hearing about how you loved Cody and what you knew about him and how you thought about him and how you saw him, that was my brother, that was my friend, and you knew him the way that I knew him. Cody's someone to emulate. I know Cody looked up to so many of you here, specific people here that he would tell me, oh, I wish I was a little bit stronger like Noel. I wish I was a little bit smarter like this person. I wish I was a little bit faster, whatever it is. I know that he looked up to so many of you specifically, but I don't think he knew how many of us in this room looked up to him. I think he'd be incredibly surprised by that. I'm going to read another passage from the book of Romans. I want you to think about the attributes that are in these verses and and which ones are those and how you saw those play out in Cody's life. It's from the book of Romans, chapter 12, starting at verse 9. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. And seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Cody lives out so much of that. And 
his friendships with you and his brotherhood to me as a son, as a father, as a husband. And I want you to know that the reason Cody lived that way was because of those words and other words like it in Scripture. That Cody sought to live a life that emulated Christ. And that's, that's what you were seeing in him. That's what you were loving in him. That's what you knew him. And so when he was with you and spent that extra time and listened well or offered something to you, he was being Christ to you. And I think what he would want you to know is where that was coming from. And so if you wanted to be more like Cody, and as we seek to honor his memory, we'll find it there in passages like that and seeking to do the same. Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is a sin. Cody knew that living out those words was the right thing to do. I'm so thankful for that. Thank you to everyone here for fire department, for Cody's friends and family. Um, you don't understand how much um, our family needed you and, and how much of a gift you've been these past two weeks. Thank you for loving Cody, and let's continue to honor him.